today I'm going to show you some of the luxury perfume brands that I wear in addition to some of the less expensive brands that I wear. Hopefully it'll give you an idea of something maybe you want to add to your fragrance wardrobe. Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about my perfume collection starting from luxury brands to more mid-level brands and one surprise celebrity brand. So let's get started. I did some research so I make sure that you know pretty much the ingredients that are in each kind of scent. You can make a decision if it's something that you'd like to try as well too. But my first is my most luxury brand. Creed tends to be a very, very high-end brand perfume, very high quality. As you can see, beautiful bottling. It's even got like a little faux gem on the top and it's called Spring Flower. It's one of the less known Creed scents. I purchased it originally because of the story behind it, and I can't verify if it's true or not, but supposedly this perfume was uh, created specifically for Audrey Hepburn in the early 1980s, and only sh this, for, this fragrance was only for her. And the tale goes that once she passed away in the mid 90s, then the perfume was released to the general public. So it was Audrey's supposedly for almost about 15 years before it was um, let out to the general public to purchase. Kind of like her first scent, L'Enterdy by Givenchy. She wore that, I think, exclusively herself for a year and then Givenchy put it on the market. She wanted it to be kept hers forever, but he had a good thing and he knew it. So it was about a year and then it was released to the general public. And of course it sold very, very well for many, many years. Creed is a very springtime uh, scent, spring summer scent, just like the name says. Uh, let me get the ingredients correctly for you. It's more of a, I would call it a fruity floral. So that's the category that I would put in, it in. Although I tend to, at least when I put it on myself, I tend to smell, smell more of the fruity notes, which is fine because it's kind of very fresh scent. So let me read to you the ingredients um, that is in this particular brand. The top note is peach, bergamot, apple, apricot, and melon. So you can see the top notes when you very first spray it will smell very fruity. Now, most people aren't going to smell the top notes on you that much because the top notes typically dissolve pretty quickly by the time you're out the door, you're into your middle notes for the most part. The middle notes are more floral and they're jasmine and rose, so that's kind of mixed in with the fruity smell. And then it dries down to a musk. And most perfumes do dry down to some kind of a musk smell. It makes the smell last longer. It also gives it a, um, some body to the, to the scent. So that's my Creed scent. Um, this was, this tends to run, all Creed perfumes tend to run um, $200 plus. So you're not going to get anything for under $200 with Creed. So make sure that you like it, try it first. But this is my go-to spring, summertime. When I go out in the evenings, for example, out to dinner with my husband or someplace um, kind of special, I'll tend to use this. Another perfume that I wear that is very, very pricey, it's Masuko by Guerlain in Paris. Uh, this scent was created in 1919. It's considered a oriental blend. They still categorize some more um, spicy smelling fragrances that have less of a flowery or citrusy scent to them as being oriental. They have a lot of musks and that kind of thing in them. This Mitsuko has been a favorite of mine for years. It was created, like I said, by uh, Pierre Guerlain himself in 1919. It's been reformulated a few times to kind of modernize it. This bottle specifically was purchased uh, and given to me by my sister when she went to her trip to Paris at Guerlain. She bought it. This is extremely pricey because it is a real perfume. It's not an eau de parfum, which tends to be a little bit watered down with alcohol. Eau de toilette is watered down a little bit more with alcohol. Cologne is the most watered down with alcohol and being the less long lasting. Perfume tends to be the most long lasting because it tends to be more oil based. 
This is a, I have to warn you, a rather strong perfume. So only strong women who can carry the scent off should wear it. You shouldn't overdo it with a perfume. You're typically going to apply it just a little bit from here, here, you know, your little pulse points and things, because it is very powerful. And if you're at a play or something, you don't want the person fainting next to you. Again, this is very, very expensive. Um, my guess is it, it was at least 300 plus dollars for this. So this is an extremely pricey perfume. I wear this in the winter time only and usually at very, very special events, weddings, um, galas, things where I'm really dressed to the nines kind of a thing because I want to savor it for a long time. And perfume does have tend to have a long shelf life. A lot of perfumes can last nine, 10 years. Okay, then let's move on to my last luxury scent, which is Tom Ford Ombre Leather. Uh, this is actually more of a man's scent, but it can be unisex, and I tend to like to wear men's fragrances every now and then just because they exude kind of a more um, powerful but yet um, sexy scent, I think, I like. And so I tend to wear this more when I'm dressed kind of in a masculine type of outfit, maybe with a little tie or something, or really just casual and just wanna wear something that's very basic, nothing too flowery or strong, something more, I'd say, kind of serious. And if I just like a man's scent too. This scent, let me read to you, is made up of a black leather, patchouli and vetiver. Now vetiver tends to be like a grassy, mossy scent and it tends to be used only, mostly I shouldn't say only, but mostly in men's fragrances. Uh, it has jasmine in it and amber moss kind of dry down. I like it because it's not real, real masculine, but it's got that masculine edge to it and I really like it. Again, Tom Ford scents are very expensive. This is 150 plus for a smaller size and then it goes up to much higher price ranges. So again, if you're gonna try any of these three scents, you know, you're probably gonna wanna go to Sephora or one of the high-end department stores and try some first to make sure that it's something that's, you know, in your particular taste scale. Um, now, one that I use really a lot, and I use this fall, winter, and early spring, it's from a place in Louisiana called Bourbon French, and they actually manufacture their own perfumes. I found out about this from my niece, who took a trip to New Orleans, and she brought me back a little pouch filled with all different types of perfumes that they make. And when I smelled Voodoo Love, I just, there was something about it I just liked. It wasn't too strong, but it wasn't, you know, wimpy where it went away in, you know, five minutes. But it really exuded kind of a, a sexy yet subtle scent that I really, really like. I tried to look up the ingredients for this and you really can't find it. Uh, so it's a mystery. But I will give you a little bit of history about it. Um, it was originally, let me get this name right. It was originally created by Marie Laveau, who was called the Voodoo Queen. And she would give it to her favorite clients so they could uh, gain the object of their affections by wearing this. So the only thing I do know is that this tends to be more amber-based, so it does have that amber dry down. It's very inexpensive. This is an, I think this is Eau de Toilette. So now this is the a little bit less than an eau de parfum as far as strength. And um, I believe this was only like $36. So it lasts a long, long time, but does not smell like a cheap scent. So that's why you have to kind of um, test around because price doesn't always equate to a wonderful scent. Sometimes it does, and then it's worth putting out the money for if you have it. But you can really find some really wonderful scents at very mid to a little bit higher end range. So a Voodoo Love I will wear as my everyday scent 
uh, fall, winter, and like I said, early spring when it's still a little chilly out because it's just a really good scent. It doesn't overdo. Um, you don't smell it, you know, uh, an hour before you walk into the room kind of a thing or an hour after you leave the room. So that's why I really like it. And it's very unique. You can only get it at Bourbon French in Louisiana. Now you can buy it online and that's how I did. And then last but not least is my celebrity fragrance. Look at how pretty. Of course it's pretty. It's by Dolly Parton. And I love Dolly Parton. All I have to do is look at Dolly Parton and I'm happy. She is the most wonderful, happy, sweet, beautiful celebrity. I love her. I just love my Dolly. I love my Dolly. And my goal is to someday go to Dollywood. I just have to get to Dollywood. But in the meantime, this caught my eye. She had a premiere on home shopping. And I think she exclusively sells it there and at Dollywood. Now look at this beautiful bottle with a crystal butterfly on it. It's plastic, I think, but it looks crystal. And of course, it's a butterfly just like Dolly. And it has Dolly engraved on the uh, uh, front of the bottle. And it is an absolutely lovely scent, exactly how you think Dolly Parton would smell. Because Dolly Parton smells sweet, and so does this. It's almost like... One of what they call a gourmand smell. So it's kind of like got a sweet candy, caramely um, scent to it. A little bit like Prada candy, but not quite as sweet as that. And I love this scent. I just love it. Let me give you the exact ingredients because I think I have those written down so you get an idea. Uh, Dolly is starts out with a little bit of fruity. She's mandarin and then peony blossoms, jasmine, vanilla which you can really smell the vanilla and then it dries down with sandalwood musk and a little patchouli it's really good i mean it's good i love myself my dolly fragrance and dolly i will wear starting um mid-spring and i will wear it all through the summer almost for everything i will you know put in spring flowers from creed if i'm going somewhere extra nice in the evening or whatever but this is my go-to all day long fragrance and this was very inexpensive compared to some of the other fragrances i have there's a generous of course dolly's generous this is a 3.4 ounce of eau de parfum and i think i spent if i can remember somewhere in the range of about 68 dollars for this something like that which is extremely expensive for this much eau de parfum so of course dolly being generous she gives you a lot and it smells like you would think dolly parton smells and i love it so this is my go-to spring summer scent so i hope that helps you a little bit with different fragrances as you can see some of the bottles and i just love the way i'm a perfume crazed person i'm always up for a new scent but as you can see these bottles are all very lovely they make really pretty additions to my vanity. And so I like to display them as well too. I also have other fragrances, uh, past and present, Jo Malone I've used, Chanel. Um, what else do I have over there? Carolina Herrera. Uh, some of those I wore for a while and I just kept them because I like the bottles. So hope that helped you with your some of your um, fragrance choices. Maybe you saw something or heard about something that you might like to try. But I think that since my channel is dedicated really to fashion, I think you cannot ignore the fact that perfume is your last fashion item that you put on when you're dressed. Uh, typically, let me give you one more tip before I leave. Um, I was taught how to put on fragrance so you're not overwhelming, except for the perfume, which I said you dab, you know, directly onto you, doesn't spray. But anything with an atomizer, what you will do is you'll spray it a couple times in the air when you're standing up. You're in your probably your lingerie, so you haven't put your clothes on because you don't want to spray perfume on your jewelry or your clothes. So probably when you're in your lingerie, right before you're going to, you know, put on your whole outfit, you squirt it a couple times in the air and then you walk through the cloud of uh, perfume and then you spray it a couple times again and you walk in the opposite direction and that'll spray you with enough so that 
your your perfume doesn't introduce you into the room. Somebody has to get close and hug you or talk to you for a while before they get a, a whiff of your lovely fragrance. Okay, so until next time, <laughs>